you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, in recent weeks, there have been growing concerns among many Americans uh, relating to the capabilities of the president to carry out uh, his duties. And not only that, but there have been concerns about the extent to which uh, some in the White House, uh, perhaps also uh, in the Congress, uh, have limited the ability of Americans to get access to the information that they need to form their own judgment uh, as to those capabilities. And I think there's a lot that is going to be need to be investigated uh, in the weeks and months ahead in that regard. But I wanted to just highlight today what might be the most disturbing uh, facet of this situation, uh, and that is the systematic efforts by the Attorney General, the Justice Department, and the White House to illegally defy a congressional subpoena in order to deprive Americans of access uh, to this sort of information. And I wanted to specifically highlight what is perhaps Exhibit A, you might even call it a smoking gun, that the White House acted in a consciously political way and deprived Americans of access to information, def defied a congressional subpoena, defied the idea of the separation of powers and checks and balances uh, for purely political reasons. For months, the Judiciary Committee under its uh, lawful oversight authority, uh, asked for the Justice Department to produce uh, the interviews that President Biden had with Special Counsel Her. These interviews were conducted, of course, as part of an investigation into the President's mishandling of classified information. And the ultimate report produced by Special Counsel Her uh, stated uh, that there was significant evidence the President had broken the law, but he was not going to recommend charges for, among other reasons, uh, the fact that the President exhibited diminished faculties and a poor memory in the course of these interviews. So the House Judiciary Committee had several legitimate bases to request access uh, to those interviews. And indeed, the Justice Department appeared to agree in as much as they did produce transcripts of those interviews. However, they have adamantly and consistently refused to actually provide the best available evidence of materials that they have agreed are pertinent to our oversight responsibilities, and that is the recordings themselves. These recordings exist. Uh, they're audio recordings uh, that, they, that continue to be suppressed and concealed uh, from the American people. And so what I have here is the letter from the White House counsel, Edward Siskel, uh, written to uh, the chairman of the Oversight Committee and the Judiciary Committee, uh, formally invoking executive privilege. This happened after weeks and weeks and weeks of stonewalling from the Justice Department. Uh, it happened moments before a hearing was convened to hold the Attorney General uh, to cite him in contempt. Uh, suddenly, the President exerts executive privilege. And what they said in this letter, this line right here, uh, is really the, the giveaway. You might even call it a smoking gun, where it says, the absence of a legitimate need for the audio recordings, of course, we did have a legitimate need for them cited repeatedly in correspondence, but this is what he says, the absence of a legitimate need for the audio recording lays bare your likely goal, to chop them up, distort them, and use them for partisan political purposes, demanding such uh, d uh, sensitive and constitutionally protected law enforcement uh, materials from the executive branch because you want to manipulate them for potential political gain is inappropriate. Now, first off, this might remind you of what we've been hearing now for weeks and for months about various videos posted online, that these were somehow selectively edited, these were deep fakes, these were eliminating uh, context. We now know that all of that uh, was, uh, you know, fairly bogus in terms of what Americans have now seen uh, plainly with their own eyes. But what's clearly going on in this paragraph is the White House is relying on a political justification for withholding the materials, but they know they can't state that explicitly, so they simply accuse us on the committee of having a political motivation. But it's actually, you don't even have to read between the lines, it's stated right there directly that they are afraid that these materials would be used against the president for potential political gain. In other words, they are afraid that they would be politically harmful to the president. But that is not, that is not a valid basis, valid legal basis, 
for defying a congressional subpoena. It is not a valid basis for exert asserting uh, executive privilege. And it is very revealing as far as what the White House knew about the recordings and about the concerns that the American people have in overwhelming numbers right now is they feared that what was revealed in those recordings would be politically disadvantageous to the president. And so as we continue uh, to learn more about the efforts that have been undertaken by the White House to deprive Americans of their right to know the most crucial of information, I think that uh, this report and this entire a uh, series of events related to uh, the subpoena issued to the Attorney General uh, is going to be a very important starting point.